Gun Sergeant Deuce Larson, how to set up a duty belt. Correction officers, there's a huge problem in setting up your duty belt. I want to thank Frank Garces, my good buddy from uh, Arizona Department of Corrections, asked me to talk briefly about this for the new boots out there. As you can see, my belt is pretty simple. There's only three things on there. Flashlight, handcuff pouch, empty, and that's for a reason, belt keepers. Belt keepers are the most important thing because when you put this belt on, it cannot move. And why do I say that? You know how to put them on. You got your belt all loose. And you got a taser on here. You need to draw your taser. You start doing this, can't get your taser out. Gotta have these belt keepers. Health, let me talk about health. When I started police in the 90s, I was 130 pounds. Gun belt. We didn't have tasers back then. Gun belt, all kinds of bullets. We carried the Glock, extra magazines over here, all this. I had to put a washcloth on my hips, my hip bones, down inside my pants that would rub on here. That's how much weight this is. And I bring that point up to say, when you set this up for health, keep in mind of your bones and your joints. When I retired from police after my 20 year career, I had to take uh, Meloxicam, Mobic, for sciatic nerve pain for 10 years because I wore a heavy gun belt. Heavy is not good. Saw a picture on Facebook last night. A guy says, how's my gun belt look? And he's got it laid out like this. And he's got about 100 items on there, really about nine. But he had so much from plastic clip to clip, there's no room for anything. It looked like an advertisement and he expected to wear that. Of course, everybody's comments are, you know, too heavy, worry about your back. Yes, your back. Worry about your back. Now, how do you go about setting this up? Most importantly, there should be a policy. Whether you work in, in, in a federal state prison or on a county level, there should be a policy. Everybody should wear it the exact same way should be dictated by the administration. Why? So they can control what's going to be healthy for you and safe. What do I mean by healthy? Be careful of the weight and don't put things right in the dead of your back. You fall down, you're gonna have spine. You don't want spine injuries. So consider that. Now I've got this on here. I'm not putting bell keeps and all this to show anything yet. My, I just wanna talk through things, okay? Where do you put your cuffs? Put your cuffs where you can reach them with both hands. You're leaning over in an awkward situation. You need to reach this way for cuff or this way. Either hand needs to be able to reach your cuffs. If you have a taser, where do you carry it? At the prison, we carried a taser on your weak hand side. So it went over here. I'm right-handed, it was on my left side. So if you got a taser here, you gotta put handcuffs somewhere you need a flashlight. Flashlight's a little, it can go anywhere. The taser, maybe put your flashlight up front, but see how your policy dictates. And why does this need to be consistent? If you're on the ground in an altercation and I show up in the dark with my eyes shut, second nature, my belt set up to your belt, I know exactly where your stuff is. If I need your cuffs, if I need to get in your pouch and get gloves out, I'm not gonna tell you everything to put on here, but put it on the same as everybody else. Think about your health, think about safety. Can you reach everything with both hands other than the taser being over here? You know, some of the county folks do a lot of transport, so they'll have an empty holster here just in case. Magazine pouches up here, up here somewhere. You got a little bit more, but your pouches are empty. You just have the nylon or leather empty right there, so there's not a lot of weight. Think about how you set these up, folks. This is very critical. I worked worked in a prison, in a level five prison, close security, max security they call it, where it's two man escorts in the behavior units in a tier program. And I supervised in there. Even when I worked in GP, I always carried two cuffs. I didn't carry cuffs on my belt, never. I never carried cuffs on my belt. Where did I carry them? 
I put a cuff in my pocket and the other cuff part hung out. Now think about this, and there were some comments on Facebook. The inmates are watching, the detainees, whatever you want to call them, they're not nice people, they're there for a reason. They watch, size you up, and evaluate everything about you. They see me walking around with two cuffs right here and a belt that's not full of junk. What my belt had was pouch with gloves and a flashlight, which I kept a little bit to the side. I had the large can of spray as a supervisor and taser over here and that's it. Simple. Cuffs were right here. Yeah, they take up some space. My radio, where was my radio? It was in my back pocket. I can hear the radio. I was trained to hear the radio. Now, what's important about the cuffs in my pocket and the radio? I'll tell you why. Imagine these are my cuffs. I got a link in and I got a link out. If I need the cuffs to grab them, I just grab a cuff, put them right on them. Grab the cuff, put them on them. Our prison, the buildings, I'm stepping back here, I want you to see this. Our buildings were set up. You had to run from building to building to building in the prison outside. It wasn't one large building where you're running down halls. So you have weather, you have outside element to deal with. We had a lot of codes. We had a couple stabbings a week from inmates, fights every day. Every day, you know, two, three times I was running to a code. If I'm running to a code and my cuffs are like this, you know, one link in, one link out, all I gotta do is flip them, let them drop down in so I don't lose them while I'm running. When I get there, I've got two sets of cuffs to deal. Go down to it to a dorm, 64 inmates. I need two cuffs, you need two, he needs two, and he needs two. We're gonna need eight cuffs real quick. Carry two, carry them right here. Now my radio, Got a big hang up about radios. I never in my police career or working in corrections, never did I wear a radio with a shoulder mic. All that is is a strangulation tool for somebody. Don't give and advertise a weapon to somebody. Now I know some people like it. It's not cool walking around with a shoulder mic up here talking for the whole world to see. We're not working at the county fair. This is your health and your life that's important right here and your coworkers. Don't give them something they can wrap around your neck. I've made a lot of videos uh, this, this year, 2021 already. There's been a lot of violence in prisons. Do not give them anything to use against you. County officers, this week we lost a deputy in Georgia. And I say we because I worked in a prison in Georgia. So Georgia is still part family to me. Pocket knife in a pocket. Now, police carry guns and do things that are they're a little bit different. The reactionary gap, the way they deal with people. On the outside, like I am now, you can keep people away from you a lot easier than in prison. In a jail, they're gonna be closer. In a prison, you go through your metal detectors to go in, there's no way you're gonna have a pocket knife. But if you work on the county level and you show up with your own gun belt and your own gear, you may have a pocket knife in your pocket, there's no metal detectors, are there? Not the county I was at. You can walk right in with anything you want in your pockets. Pocket knife, whatever. Don't advertise something. I made this, this comment in the video, my gun takeaway video, you gotta watch. I'm taking a gun away from somebody, pointing a gun at me, step to the side and get it. Think about this. What you advertise, you have a gun, I'm gonna come up. I'm not gonna reach to take your gun. I'm gonna come up by your gun hole, by your gun. I'm gonna put my hand on it, make you go to trap it. But really what I'm gonna do is hit it slide down to your pocket, pull your knife out, and I'm gonna get you with your knife. And that's what happened to that deputy. Folks, you gotta be careful what you are wearing and what you are doing. It's not a contest of who's got the most 5.11 gear. I love 5.11 gear. Safari Land Gauls, they all make good products. It's not a contest. It's not a beauty contest. It's not GQ tryouts. It's What's going to make me the beast safe? And I'm not giving them something to hurt my coworkers either. Not me or my coworkers. Safety. Officer presence, safety. Think about these things in setting up your duty belt. When you take it off and go like this, nothing should fall out. The shake test. When I was on the SWAT team, we'd meet, we'd gear up on a call out. You get in the park a lot. Everybody, we'd line up. Jump up and down, noise test. 
you cannot jingle. No keys, no coins, nothing in your pockets can make noise when you go on an entry. You can't go into a crack house jingling like Santa Claus, can you? The noise test, we also did our weapons check. Double check, triple check. Make sure everything is hot and loaded when you go in. When you're in training, make, triple check, make sure they were empty. Check your partners. Now I know I'm repeating myself because this is important. There should be a policy that tells you how to do this. Set it up so if you fall down, you're not getting hurt. Do not set yourself up to wear extra weight to wear down your back and your spine or hurt your spine. A lot of police and, and, and some corrections are having vests with more things in the vest because your shoulders can handle this better than your spine and your hips. Have a policy. And you know what happens when you have a policy? You need to check it. How often do you have inspection? At the prison, you know, we, we worked at five days one week, two days the next week. Probably every other day, the sergeants, myself and another sergeant, were conducting roll call inspection. Everybody lined up in formation. We inspected everybody. A part of what we inspected was this belt. How is the belt? Do they have the necessary gear? Do they have the same gear as everybody else? And is it set up the same way? Now, prison controls this a lot better. Here's two pet peeves of mine. And I understand why people want to do this. Don't do it. Do not bring your own mace. Do not bring your own handcuffs. Only use issued equipment. And why do I say that? Why is that important? Say you're in a dorm with me and something happens. We got some inmates going, we go to spray and spray and something happens different. Inmate has a bad reaction. Something goes crazy, ends up in the hospital. Well, when your spray's done, you go to turn it in and the officer says, oh no, this is my own personal spray. Wait a minute, where's the accountability for that? This falls on the administration, the wardens, the superintendents, the jailers. What if this inmate dies? What if they, they have permanent damage to their eye? You're liable, you're accountable for it. It needs to fall on, on your agency as agency spray, agency responsibility, not your own. If you bring your own in and you spray somebody and it ends up blinding their eye permanently, and it's a different brand, it's different than what's carried, that inmate's defense attorney is gonna have you in your house and, and the rest of your life finances in that inmate's pocket. You're giving them away, just like your handcuffs. If your handcuffs malfunction, they, they click wrong, they do something, they don't latch, they get tighter, it causes damage to the wrist bone of this inmate. Here's how I know this is gonna happen. When you're in court as a police officer and they ask you to question, you did this, did you draw your, your firearm and point it at, at this suspect in this, this armed robbery situation? Yes, I'm, my name is Officer Steve Larson. I, I work for Boone County Sheriff, yes. Yes, that was my sidearm. What was it? Oh, it's my Glock 22. Is it yours or is it the department's? The department issued this to me. The same as the Glock 23 I carry as a backup on my ankle. I've been asked this in court. Was it my own personal gun, even though I'm in uniform on duty, or was it department gun? If it's department gun, it has department records of purchase, it has the training records, the serial number matches. Every time I train, it's logged on my sheet. If it's a personal gun, then how do you know if it's been cleaned? Whose ammo is it? Are you buying special SP plus ammo? And you know, super hollow points? The old black talons, anybody old enough to remember that? Or is it department issued? If it's not department issued, they're gonna have a field day with you in court. This is where I'm getting at. Don't bring your own stuff. Supervisors check. Stop allowing this own stuff to come in. They want to buy handcuffs and mace, put them in their car, keep them at home, whatever they want to use mace and handcuffs for, that needs to stay home. When it comes to the work, if they clock in that clock, it should be department issue, except for t-shirts, socks, and underwear. Everything else should be department issue. Consistency. We always preach fair, firm, and consistent. You gotta be consistent with your uniform the same way as you do in treating the inmates. You have to be, because there's national policies about this. So does this make sense? Be healthy, be safe with your gear, and be consistent. 
Everybody should line up and look identical. The only time I'm gonna use the word robots, you should look like a robot when you are set up on your duty belt. Now Frank asked me before, and I'll throw this in to close, we talked about some emergency gear. Yes, we had gloves. I carried four by four gauze pads. Where did I carry them? My pants got a side pocket right here. Gauze, gauze pads right here. Some four by fours. Yeah, medical has them, there's first aid kits. I kept them with me, why? In case myself or one of my buddies got injured, I need to stop some bleeding quick. Gloves, gauze pad, sanitizer, some band-aids, some big band-aids. Why? There's a lot of germs and disease and infection in a correction environment. You get a cut or something, you need to cover that up quick. Carry your own band-aids. That can get stuffed in a pouch like this, where your handcuffs go. Your, your, uh, you can have a pouch for your gloves, stick it in there. Shirt pocket, a couple band-aids, doesn't take up space in a shirt pocket. Carry what's going to save your life. Don't carry to look good. Don't carry to have it. Don't carry to brag about it. Does that make sense? I intentionally avoided saying, put something here, here, here. I'm not going to tell you exactly where all these go. Everybody's body size and structure is different. Everybody's state is going to be different. But get with your people and find out exactly how it needs to go and never change that. I've wore leather, this is vinyl. I like both. This, uh, this is made by Bianchi. I really like this, it's thick, but it's bendable, it's flexible. Never had a problem with this uh, at the prison four years. Never had a problem. Folks, be safe. It's a war zone behind the walls. And I hate to say that, just being honest. I'm always honest and real with you. It's a war zone. You be ready for war. Be ready to run. Be ready to fight. Be ready to roll and move on the ground with whatever you got on your belt. Can you do that? Can you roll over? Can you get from your back to your stomach to your back to your stomach? Can you make four or five rolls with this on without being hurt? That's what's important. Thanks for watching. If you have any, any video suggestions, uh, throw them out there to me in the comments. Hit the like, hit the share this with everybody. New Boots, thank you for choosing this career in this tough times, 2020 and 2021. Welcome aboard. There's plenty of us uh, old timers, happy to help you. See you soon.